I've been reading and hearing, well, I haven't been reading, but I've been hearing about a guy named David Buss, B-U-S-S, Buss. I don't know how he pronounced that, but he wrote a book called The Evolution of uh, Se- Evolution of Desire or Evolution of Sex and Desire, something like that. He's got a whole bunch of books on this, and I think I'm going to start getting into this guy because it um, seems like he's hitting on some of the things that I'm exactly talking about. Um, of course, he's looking at it from a more evolutionary standpoint. Um, in my younger years, I looked at it from a more spiritual standpoint, meaning I grew up in church, I grew up reading the Bible, but I realized that at some, at a certain point, and despite my belief in God, despite my, my faith and my believing the Bible is fully true, um, I realized that women do view, um, sex and marriage from an evolutionary standpoint and what the evolutionary standpoint that they view it from is hypergamy. Um, and if not hypergamy strictly meaning marrying up or always marrying up, at least, um, they view it from, uh, you know, the standpoint that the man has to always be working or has to always be, uh, providing. So, one of the things that happened to me in my early life when I was about 19 was I stopped um, uh, being able to work. I, I had an illness and I stopped being able to work entirely. Um, I had an I had insom- insomnia, so I couldn't sleep um, at, at regular hours. And this caused me to not be able to hold down a job. So this also happened right around the time I moved uh, from one side of a, a certain state to another side of a certain state. And, um, when I was, when I was before I moved, I was on the basketball team and I was sought after by women. I was sought after by females. And, um, I realized that throughout my life when I, I was always attracted, you know, girls were always attracted to me, but I could never, I shouldn't say I could never, but it was hard for me to get a girlfriend. I got girlfriends every once in a while, but it was always hard for me to get a girlfriend, um, to stay at least, um, I could get a girlfriend for three months. I could get a girlfriend for six months. I could get a girlfriend for usually never longer than six months. They would always leave, um, at some point. Um, and some, sometimes occasionally, I think like one time I broke up with her, maybe two times I broke up with, with, with a girl. Uh, One time I just sort of lost interest in one girl. The other time I found a better girl, a better looking girl. So actually I was being hypergamous in that, in that scenario, uh, by finding a better looking girl. Um, so I had always had trouble, uh, getting girls. Um, but when I, you know, was in high school, I was able to be on the basketball team. And then I noticed that, wow, lots of girls were looking at me. So before it was like, I was able to get girls cause I was good looking, but they weren't all that interested in, and they were more low status type of girls. They weren't as attractive. Right. So attractiveness for a female is her, is her status in today's society, or maybe it's always been like that. I really don't know. Um, so it was like weird. And I was like, this is, there's something weird about this, you know, when it was happening and, and, uh, you know, most guys would just be like, yeah, I'm the man. And now I'm getting girls and blah, blah, blah. But for me, it was like, I was like, why? And, and it's, I sort of felt weird about it. It felt like it wasn't, um, it wasn't genuine. Right. So I was able to take girls on dates and things like that. Um, you know, girls that I would have never been able to take on dates before, but this was because I had popularity and I was on the basketball team. I was, I was successful. I had high status essentially socially, right? Lots of people liked me. People knew I was cool. I was tall. I was on the basketball team. I was, I was, I was decently good looking. Right. So, um, then all of a sudden I moved to a different side of the state. And I wasn't playing basketball anymore. And then it was like I was nothing. And before, um, I the city that I lived in was more of a poor city. It was a poorer city where the median income, I think, was like 40000 maybe even 35000 36000 around there. Then I moved to another city where the median income was seventy five, seventy six thousand. 76000 So when I moved to that other city, I was just as poor as I was before. But all of a sudden I'm even, I'm just a nobody. Like I'm even less than a nobody. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm considered a loser in this new city, this new society, because I have lower status than I've ever had in my life due to not playing basketball anymore, not being on the basketball team. I graduated high school, um, didn't go to college, 
I was working it as like a delivery driver. So I was the lowest of the low. And then all of a sudden I couldn't get a girl to save my life, even, even an ugly girl. And I was like, wow, there's something crazy about this. And that's when I had a sort of, you, um, I don't know, universal or abstract epiphany about life. And that's is when I, that was when I sort of like, quote unquote, left the matrix. And I really had no choice of, of leaving the matrix because I was no longer in the, I was no longer succeeding in the matrix. So it was like, I could have continued to try to work my way up from the bottom, but why? Because I, I, I realized that this matrix that I was in, that was, I was successful in had stabbed me in the back. It had, um, you know, it, it had betrayed me before I was, I was leading and I was like, you know, maybe this is the way things were supposed to be because I'm going after my goals. Everything you read and, and grow up in high school and, and middle school and elementary says, you know, shoot, shoot for the moon, go after your goals, you know, um, be successful, you know, dream big, all these things they tell you. And then you do that. You're like, yeah, I want to be a basketball player or I want to be an artist or I want to be an, an actor or I want to be, um, you know, a lawyer or a doctor, what we you know, all these things that they, they, you aspire to be and they tell you to be. And then once you reach them, you're like, wow, this must be what life is really all about. But then once you get it taken away, you're like, oh, there's no loyalty here. There's no, there's no, um, if, if you slip, it's all on your shoulders. If you slip and it's gone, nobody cares about you anymore. That's not human. That's not faithful. Or, you, know, you know what I mean? That's not like love. There, there, there's, there's nothing warming about that. There's nothing accepting about that. It's just you perform or else you're, you're, you're nothing. Right. And so it's like, that's a social hierarchy. And why should I give my life and give my blood, sweat and tears to a social hierarchy that will benefit me if I succeed in it? But if I don't succeed in it, it's going to stab me in the back and forget about my, my absolute memory, right? Why, why would I do that? And that's the epiphany that I went through when I was 20 and I got sick and I couldn't work anymore. For a while, I was working as a delivery driver and I had low status and it took me a while to realize, well, I'm, I'm low status, but at least I had a job, right? But then once I got sick and I couldn't work anymore, I, I even had to quit that job. I realized I'm, I'm just nothing and nobody cares and women wouldn't even give me the time of day. Right. And so I realized, Oh, women are that shallow there. And, and society is that shallow. And so it's like women and society, they, they go hand in hand because women are social beings. M men are social beings too, but women are more social than men. We, you know, if, if a guy doesn't at least have a friend group, you know, his, um, his, his category of women that he's going to be able to attract He's going to be very low. He's going to have to take the dregs or he's going to have to take the worst of the worst or unless he just gets lucky and finds a really attractive independent woman. But that's generally – and when I say independent woman, I don't mean a woman who makes her own money. I mean a woman who isn't really attached to social things. Most people, most women are. They're, they're just part of that matrix. I mean maybe there's women out there who are totally woke and who are like, yeah, no – um, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm totally by myself and but that's usually there's something mentally wrong with those type of women because women are usually just more social. They're, they're more attuned to social groups. This is why men often go to clubs. This is why men often go to bars. Um, this is why men often, you know, go out to events and things like that. They don't go because they generally think those things are fun. Usually they go because the women are there, right? Men don't think clubs are cool. The reason why men go to clubs is because the women are there. Right. W women think clubs are cool. Why? Because women are social. They're social creatures. Humans in general are social creatures, but women are more so than men. You, you know, you can just observe it. It's just true. Men, it's easy for a man to be a, go out and be a mountain man. It's more, it's a lot more rare for a woman to go out and be a mountain woman. She has to be really ugly and really independent. And so it's like, it's very difficult to find a, a relatively attractive woman who doesn't expect the man to have social status. So I realized that and, and I just walked away. And so that was something that, that totally opened my eyes to women in general. And I realized that 
they're not faithful creatures. They're not loyal creatures because of this, you know, I, because of that, that type of hypergamy that they're not loyal. They're fundamentally unloyal. They, they want what they want and, and they don't care if, if, if it's any certain type of man. So the concept of true love, which is that you found your other half, you found the person that you're supposed to be with because, um, you just love that person and that person is so special to you. That's just Hollywood. That's something that's made up, you know, maybe some people find that, but I think it's very rare. Um, because it, you know, relationships are just exchange. Uh, they're just interchangeable. They're just exchangeable. And you know, what a man needs is for a woman to give him sex and for a woman to give him intimacy, right? Well, that's easy. It's easy for a woman to give a man sex and intimacy. What a woman needs from a man is for the man to provide security and for the man to take care of her financially and to make sure that she is safe and things like that, right? Well, that's those two things are evolutionary trade-offs, right? So if the man doesn't have those and he's not able to provide, which is becoming increasingly harder in this society where you can't even survive on a minimum wage job. And it's like, where are the jobs coming from? So this whole scenario is, um, this whole political and socioeconomic, um, spectrum or, 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 or I should say system is contingent, um, or not contingent, this whole social political socioeconomic system lens to, it, it doesn't help men. It doesn't help the average guy. It helps the men who are the most successful. So you have a, you have a a sort of socially enforced hypergamous scenario that you could argue that women are forced to play into, but I, I believe that their biology plays into it naturally. So it's easy for a woman to give a man sex, right? It's easy for a woman to give a man sex, you know, in the sense that she's not exerting much effort there. She's not going out and working a nine to five just to give a man intimacy. No, she can give a man intimacy anytime she wants. And this is why she holds more power in the social, uh, sexual, you know, marketplace. This is why she holds more power in the social sexual marketplace because it's easy for her to give intimacy for a man. He has to work 40 hours a week, maybe even now, nowadays, 60 hours a week. And so he can get that status that women want. This is why men go out. This is why men are ambitious. This is why we, we, we try to be winners and why we try to be the best at, in, a, in a certain field so we can get the best women, so we can get the best woman. But, it, but when, when all those things happen to me, when I, when I switch cities and I can no longer work and, and I lost all my status, I realize that there's no love there. There's no faithfulness there. If you lose your status, you're done. This is why divorce happens. What is a top three um, causation of divorce? Finances. It's it's it used to be number one. I, I believe it's either two or three. Now it's you know finances and infidelity, right? Finances, infidelity, and then just you know irreconcilable differences, meaning you guys just don't get along or whatever. Those are the top three generally, usually. But finances is it has has been number one, right? And divorce is at 60 plus percent. That's 50-50. So you have a 50-50 percent chance of her cheating on you or you lo- if you lose your job, she's going to leave you or she just doesn't like you anymore. You're not the man I married or, or whatever or, or you don't like her you know, or, or you cheat on her or whatever. It can go both ways, but I'm not saying it's always the women who's breaking up with the man, but those are the top three. So finances is right up there. And this is what women want. If you read these books by this guy, David and Bus, and his books are just, you know, like I said, I haven't read them yet, but they seem to be along those lines. And I've heard people talk about them and they are, and, and, and I've, I've, I've watched videos on them, like on YouTube and things like that. So this is just what guys are saying. Women want a guy who's high status. And this is something that echoes my experience. It's just, yes, that's exactly true. It's 100% true. Women want a guy who is high status. That is fundamentally shallow, fundamentally materialistic. So do you want me because I'm able to hold down a job and provide for you? Or do you want me because I'm me? So if I couldn't hold down a job and I couldn't provide for you, you just leave me and go find somebody else. How, how shallow is that? How, how, how just cringy and materialistic is that? 
that's just like such i mean that's that's almost just like betrayal like oh okay you you love me when i have a job but you you'll leave me if i lose my job because i'm a loser now to you quote unquote so men are just utility men are a means to an end if if a man doesn't provide for you you just exchange him with some other guy who does provide for you how sick is that how messed up is that so this is what i i realize and this is something that i've been realizing my whole life um, sadly, and this is something that, that causes me not ever, ever to want to get married. I don't ever want to get married because of that, because I'm viewed as a means to an end. And every relationship I've had has always been in some way or another based around this. I've never had a relationship when I was a total loser. Never. Women didn't want to have anything to do with me when, when I, you know, quote unquote, outwardly, I was a total loser, although I have a lot to offer inwardly in my heart. I've got, an, I've got a lot of love to offer. I've got a lot of intimacy to offer. I've got a lot of personality to offer. I've got a lot of, um, you know, uh, want for shared experiences, meaning I would love to go out and do things with women, I, you know, uh, would love to go out and spend time with my, my woman and, and go and experience life and live with her and love her and things like that. But none of that matters if I don't have a job, right? So everything that's important about me is worthless to a woman if I don't have any status. And I realized that and I realized, oh, it's not about me. So it's like she could have those shared experiences with anyone. She could have those shared experiences with Joe next door because he's got a better job than me. So she chooses Joe next door because she she feels like he can provide for her because that's more important than who Joe next door is in his heart or who I am in my heart. It's more important to her that she have her her security taken care of and her finances taken care of than shared experiences and, and my heart and, and my love. And that's what I realized. And I was like, wow, that's really messed up. Well, it's no wonder why divorce is at 60% because it's not based or founded in real love. It's not based or founded on shared experiences, on building, actually building and working on a real relationship with somebody despite, you know, maybe a poor environment, despite having, you know, lack of resources, et cetera. No, women want the resources more than they want real love. So they're seeking that. And the irony is, well, if you look at their, the, the actual track record, are, are women actually really successful? Are, are very many relationships actually really that successful? It seems to me that most people are not in successful relationships. I don't know the statistics on that. But it seems to me that most people are not in successful relationships. And if there is a successful relationship, the guy always um, or, or, or almost always, I would say 95, maybe even 98 percent, the guy is is holding down a, you know, a steady job. So it's always contingent upon the guy holding down a steady job. And on top of that, like I said, I don't think like most of these young girls running around out there. They're not in really good, successful, long-term relationships, most of them, from what I see. And, it, and again, if they are, the guy has a steady job. So it's like people would say, well, why don't you just man up and go out and get a steady job? Well, okay, sure. I'll succumb to the matrix. I'll succumb to that system so that I can get a girl who would leave me if I didn't have that steady job. Well, then I couldn't fully love that girl if that was the case. I couldn't fully trust her. I couldn't fully be faithful to her because I know all that, all that would have to happen is for me to lose my job. All that would have to happen was for me to lose my status and she'd be gone. So this woman doesn't really love me fully. She loves me conditionally. Her love for me is conditioned upon the fact that I have steady income and I have steady work. And I, it, it could potentially have always been like that if you, if you look at it from an evolutionary standpoint. And I was stupid when I was younger to look at it from a spiritual standpoint, which is that, you know, man comes together, you know, and finds a woman to love. And maybe if he finds his quote unquote other half and they're, and they're bonded and paired together and God blesses it and whatever, this is what I thought when I was younger. Then I realized, no, it's more of an evolutionary thing. The guy needs to provide. And because the guy needs to provide, fundamentally, it's, 
it's variable. It's fundamentally changeable. Meaning if the guy loses his job and he goes through a period of, say, five years where he's on unemployment or Social Security or whatever, she could think this guy's a loser at any moment and just go find somebody else who has a better job. Or she could play into hypergamy at any moment and leave him and divorce him when she finds a guy who has a better status job. This is why women are swingers. Well, I don't say this is why women are swingers, but this is why women cheat often, seems like. How many times have you heard about a woman who's, who's, who's connected to a, a spouse or a husband or whatever, and she goes out and she cheats with someone who's famous or she goes to a concert and she, they've all got that fantasy. How many times have you seen porn where it's talking about, you know, girlfriend cheats on, on boyfriend, uh, wife cheats on husband constantly. Those are oftentimes real. Those aren't just taglines. Those are real. She's really cheating on her husband. She's really cheating on her boyfriend because she's, f- 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 you know, fulfilling this fantasy, you know, with porn, it's a fantasy. And with the other thing, it's a fantasy, but she's still, you know, you know, sometimes it's just about sex, but other times it's really just, she's trying to find a guy who's better status. She wants that freedom, but she she also wants that security. So she's going to not leave that guy who she has, um, you know, she's not going to leave that guy who, who she has at home because he's her bread and butter. He's her, he's her, her mainstay, right? If she can find something better though, if she can find a more stable guy who, or, or you know, if she can find a stable relationship with a better, a guy with a better career, then she'll do it. And this is a lot of times why divorces happen. And on the flip side, yeah, there's guys who who find a hotter girl and then they leave the woman. On the flip side of this, you know, evolutionary hypergamy, you know, a guy can, because he's got high status, he'll 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 have a woman at home and then he'll go out and sleep with you know other multiple women. So, men and women both take advantage of this hypergamy thing. So that that lends me to question the whole system in general. Is that a good system that you base love and long term relationships and marriage on? finances on stable income it's like yeah we all need to eat i get it like that's a necessity and and because of the current system we all need to go work etc in order to eat but what if you can't what if you get ill this happened to me i got ill i had to be taken care of by family members because i couldn't get disability because they they, you know i was was misdiagnosed underdiagnosed and what i was diagnosed with that they said, why don't you just get a night job? Well, if it turns out I had something called non-24, which is, if you look it up, it's a circadian rhythm disruption uh, disease that just, or, you know, illness. I wouldn't say a disease because a disease means it's progressive. It's an illness um, that disrupts my circadian rhythms. So I sleep at different times during the week. That's variable. I can't fall asleep at certain times. It's like I could sleep five in the afternoon, you know, the week after that, I could be sleeping at 5 a.m. It's all, it's always variable. I couldn't, I couldn't hold down a job and it's rare. I think less than 2% or less than 5% or something like that. 4% of the whole population of the world have this, have this illness. So I couldn't go out and just get a night job because I couldn't hold down a steady job. And I've, I've never suffered more in my life. I, I just like, I was constantly suffering because I was constantly like, you know, I, I'm, I'm 21. I'm in my twenties suffering this illness. How am I going to figure life out? How am I going to go out and get married? And I couldn't because women wouldn't give me the time of day. And so it's like, whoa, you know, if I didn't have this illness, I would have just found some woman. you know, I, 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 I would have had a job maybe as a whatever, because I never graduated college. Um, Unfortunately, I did, I did go to college, but I never graduated. So if you don't, and again, in this system, if you don't have a college degree, you make less than 25000 a year for the rest of your life. If you, people who have college degrees make more than 25000 right? So, you, so if you have a college degree, likely you're going to be making thirty, thirty-five, forty thousand 40000 a year, which is middle class. If you don't have a college degree, you're going to be making 25000 or less, which is lower class. So right there, you're screwing yourself. If you don't graduate college, then you're not playing into this evolutionary hypergamy or or this evolutionary um, desire. So guys who don't graduate college are not going to be successful with women, as successful with women as guys who do graduate college, which is a sad but true fact, which also exposes this hypergamy. 
women want to know if you went to college or not. They want to know how much money you're making. <laughs> the, hot, the better looking women get the higher class men. They get the men who go to college and who have went to college because those guys are making more money. That's more attractive to them. And, and most people would say, well, why not? It's a better lifestyle. Why wouldn't they choose a better lifestyle? That kind of makes sense. Like, like, why would I be living in lower class housing if I could be living in middle or upper class housing? I would obviously choose middle or upper class housing. However, that decision is enwrapped in your concept of love. But that that is variable. So it's like if you can't love someone if they don't if they're not middle or upper class, then you're a shallow person by definition. You're a bad person by definition. By definition, you are not somebody who, who really should be loved because your concept of love is contingent upon something that's materialistic. That's just a fact. So by definition, by, by, um, by default, by biological default, many women are, or most women, are not worthy of real love. If they're, if they fall into this evolutionary thing and isn't that crazy? And so this is what I've learned by having this rare illness. I, I could have settled, you know, I've, I've had really attractive women in my life. When I was on the high school team, or when I was on the, on, the, on the high school basketball team and when I was popular, I was able to attract really attractive women and I got hot girls, but those relationships didn't last. They qu they quickly, because it was like, there's always somebody around the corner. Like, you know, I was kind of a skinny guy, even though I dressed nice, I was kind of skinny because I, you know, I played basketball and I was tall. Right. And so I attracted a girl and I attracted a really hot, you know, I had a really hot Spanish girl that I was really hot for. And I really, I, I felt like I really loved her, but then I cheated on, her. I cheated on her because I had that option and, and I did. And I felt so bad about it. I went and told her and she dumped me right there. She wanted me to be faithful to her. And so the, then she turned around and she, she, she found a guy who, who also had high status. He wasn't on the basketball team, but he was really buff. And when you're a buff in, call, in, in high school, you're really popular. So he was really popular and cool. So she dumped me because I cheated on her. I, I, because I had that, I, evolutionarily, I had that option, right? But well, yeah, we take in women who will evolutionarily go out and cheat on men. Because... That's how, that's how sought after women are. So, um, you know, when, when I had that high status, it was like, I was able to attract really hot, really, really good looking women. And then later on when I didn't have that status, I wasn't even, I was, because I was in that situation where I didn't have high status, I would have taken what I could get. I, I lowered my standards and I started looking for, well, okay, she doesn't have a nice face, but wow, she's got a really nice Hits or she's got really nice uh, legs, so I'll settle for that, you know. And so that's how I was thinking at that time. I was like, "Well, I'm going to lower my standards." So, and I'm sure women do it too. If they're not as attractive, they lower their standards and say, "Well, he's not a middle class guy. He doesn't have a middle class house. He's got a lower class house." But I'll lower my standards to where, okay, I'll I'll deal with a guy who has a lower class house because at least he's got stable income, right? At least she's got, you know, nice tits. At least she's got, maybe she doesn't have a nice face, but at least she's got this or that. So it's like, we start to, we start to do this. And so, you know, one could easily make the argument, well, men do it too. Why should anybody do it? Why should men do it? Why should men choose the hottest type of girl? And this is what I realized when I was, when I had low status and I was poor was I was like, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop looking for this hot blonde that I want. And I'm going to start looking for real love, whether she's a hot blonde or whether she's an Asian or whether she's black or whether she's, um, really thick and overweight or whether she's skinny. I don't care. I want real love. And I dated all kinds of different girls. I dated black girls. I dated Asian girls. Um, I, I slept with black girls. I slept with, I, you know, I, 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 I was sleeping around because, you know, whatever. So it's like, you know, you know, women can turn around and say, well, men sleep around too. Well, men are not, because of our status, we're not able to sleep around in the same vein as women sleep around. We're not able to sleep around as easily as women can sleep around, which is that that's, there's an imbalance there. So when you women's trying to make the argument that men sleep around, so therefore I can sleep around, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's being, she's being, uh, foolish and she's being, um, she's not being wise. She's not being, uh, She's not being logical. 
she, women have more access to sex because men don't require for women to have nice careers in order to have sex with them. All, all women have to be as willing and men and, and women often hate men for this, but then they turn around and then they choose the guy who has high status and then they get mad that the guy who has high status is able to, who was able to sleep around with a lot of women. They get mad that he cheats when they're the one who chose the guy with high status who, who is able to cheat. It doesn't make any sense. So it's like, it's a self-fulfilled prophecy. You're, you're creating your own misery. And this is why so many women out there are just so miserable and so messed up in their mind and their emotions because they, they create their own hell. By, by this, because of this hypergamy, because, because of this evolutionary biological quagmire that, that we're living in. So it's a messed up, the whole situation is messed up from both perspectives, from the, the female perspective and the male perspective. So my, my argument here is that under that system and under those evolutionary biological circumstances, whatever, it's not a good idea to try to get a relationship or to ever get married. Until that changes. And this is something that took me 10 years, a decade to figure out, took me a decade to maybe even more than a decade to um, maybe even 10, 15 years, I'd say 14 years to maybe 12 years. <laughs> no, probably 14 years um, to, to, to just really come to this conclusion. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Why do it? She could leave you at any time. Is it real love? Or if it ever happens, if it ever can exist, it has to be real love. It can't be on that basis of if I lose my job, you're going you're gonna to leave me. It can't be on that basis. And I would say the only way that it's possible is if you met a girl and you didn't have a job and she still loved you and she still cared, she still cared for you and she was never like, you need to get a job or else I'm going to leave you. That's the only way it would be real from a man's perspective. That's the only way it would be real love. And I, I felt like I almost had that with some girl recently. And then she cheated on me and turned out she you know, was playing, playing me and playing a game. And I thought that she might have been one who – and she, she called me a loser when, when, you know, when we broke up and said, you know, you don't work and this, that, and third, you know, and da, da, da. And it's like, I'm like, well, yeah, but I got all this other stuff to offer. Like maybe I don't work, but I'm not lazy. I make music, I write, I make these podcasts, I do this, that, and the third, right? And so from, from the outside perspective, you look at me and say, oh, well, well you're financially not stable. You're, you're a loser, right? Why don't you get a job? Da, da, da. Well, I have an illness, right? And then if, you, if you're in that scenario, oh, well, I have an illness, then, then people feel sorry for you, which means they don't want to sleep with you if they feel sorry for you, right? Oh, yeah, he's attractive, but, you know, he's a loser. He gets food stamps. You know, he, 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 he's poor. Maybe, but, but, but look, I make great food with it. <laughs> I'm able to eat healthy. I work out. I've got weights. I work out. I'm in shape, you know? Like I, I, I've, there, there's a lot of guys who are super rich who are fat as hell. And they're ugly and they don't have good personalities and they don't have a lot of love to offer. I do. You know, so my point in saying all that is not for anybody to feel sorry for me. It's so that I use an example of what real love is. Real love is loving someone despite their looks. She's not that attractive, but she's got a great heart. Like that movie Shallow Hal with Jack Black, right? She's fat. She's overweight, but she's got a great personality and she's faithful and she's not a slut she's not a loose girl and she she loves me and she loves god or she has goals and she has hobbies and she she's got a lot to offer she's a really sweet person she's got a great heart that's what i fell in love with i didn't fell in love with the fact that she's beautiful and she's gorgeous and wow she's a stunner she and she should be on cosmo magazine she should be on teen magazine look how cool she dresses woo 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 no forget about all that She's got a great heart and she's got a lot of love to offer and she's faithful and she's kind and she's funny. Flip it. Well, he doesn't have a great job, but he's kind. He's funny. He's got a great heart. He's faithful. He's, he wants to be intimate with me and spend time with me only. He doesn't try to go out and bang 20 other, other girls, 25 girls and, and single moms. And he doesn't try to bang everything walking. He loves me. 
she's not a slut. She doesn't try to go out and sleep with that pro basketball player. She doesn't try to go out and sleep with actors. She's not an Instagram thought. She loves me despite the fact that I, I don't have a job. She loves me despite the fact that I, I love to play video games. She loves me despite the fact that I don't, you know, I'm not like super popular, super high status. She loves me despite the fact I'm really boring and I don't have many hobbies and I just, all I really like to do is write in my journal. She still loves me. That's real love because you love that person for who they really are, not for what they do. You see, who somebody is and what they do are two different things. Yes, they're, they're, they're relatable and they're, 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 they, they can be interlinked, but they're still two different things. Who you are in your character, who you are in your heart, who you are in your personality is absolutely unique to you alone. And it's unique to your soul. But this whole world system that, that, that we're in puts emphasis and puts importance on things that are not linked to you directly, the things that are linked to materialism, things that are linked to your pocketbook, things that are highly variable, which basically takes away your importance. Fundamentally, it takes away your importance. This is why so many people are suicidal. This is why so many people are depressed. This is why so many people are addicted to substances. Because fundamentally, they're not loved. Fundamentally, they're not cared for. Fundamentally, they're told that they are exchangeable, that they're interchangeable with someone else. Fundamentally, they're, they're not, they don't feel special. In a sense, we're not that special. We're one out of six billion. But there's no one else out there that has our exact DNA. There's no one else out there that has our exact personality. There's no one else out there that has our exact experiences. There's no one else out there that has our exact disposition, our exact emotions, our, our exact heart, our exact goals. No one. So we are unique. Uh, you know, there's different ways to look at it. We are unique. We are worthy of love. We are special and we should be special to someone. We, we might not be special to everyone. That's, that's where celebrities come in. That's where famous people come in because they're generally special in something that millions of people accept, but we can't all be celebrities. So this whole the hypergamous scenario and this whole status seeking scenario is frivolous. Ultimately, ultimately it's frivolous. Ultimately it's foolishness because we can't all be a celebrity. We can't all be special like that. So why couldn't someone just love you for you and not a bunch of people love you for you, right? Why do we seek this universal and, and group acceptance as opposed to just one person's love and acceptance? That's a sickness. There's something wrong with that. Maybe we're being programmed. Maybe it's, I mean, you know, like, like, like this guy, David Bush argues it's evolutionary, but Maybe there's something twisted, you know, in, in that evolutionary design. We can't just say, oh, well, that's evolution. Let's all try to be famous. Let's all try to be Eminem. Let's all try to be Elvis. Let's all try to be Johnny Depp. Let's all try to be Brad Pitt. Let's all try to be Jennifer Aniston. Let's all try to be Beyonce. Let's all try to be Rihanna. Let's all try to be Oprah. No, you be you. Be who you are. And hopefully someone will love and accept you for who you are. Despite your finances, despite the fact that you got really small titties, despite the fact that you got pimples, despite the fact you got, a, you know, a big fat nose or nappy hair or you're fat, <laughs> despite the fact you got, you got uh, no ass, despite the fact you got a small dick, despite the fact you don't drive a nice car, despite the fact you hang out at the library, despite the fact you know, you like quirky, weird things, despite the fact you're into origami and you're into video games or you're into Chinese checkers or whatever. Despite all that weirdness, someone loves you for you. Someone, not a bunch of people, not a group of, of body count people that you slept with, not, oh, I'm so popular. Look, all the guys want to fuck me. Ah, I got high stats. Woo, woo, woo. No, you're a slut. That's not cool. That's not like, well, that's something that you should be, uh, 
(laughs) put on a pedestal. No, that's actually something to be ashamed of. Because, okay, maybe you can sleep with a lot of girls, but have you found love? Have you found one person to love? Oh, sure. It's it's fun when you're in your 20s to go out and have a bunch of sex. But then what? Oh, you caught an STD or you caught you caught a baby or you caught a broken heart or you wasted 10 years of your life that you could have been spending with an amazing person who really loved you for you. And you wasted all that time because you were out seeking temporary pleasure and it made you pessimistic. It made you depressed ultimately overall. These are things that people are doing. They're wasting their lives with this stuff. These women are social climbing. They're chasing. If you ever go to Hollywood and you go to like clubs and stuff and you see these women who are, you know, trying to bang celebrities or trying to play, you know, jump, ride the cock carousel and jump from the biggest fish to a bigger fish to a bigger fish to a bigger fish. What a waste of life. And you're sleeping with those guys all along the way. Spreading STDs, you know. Sex without intimacy, sex without affection, sex without love. And guys, in the same manner, you're going out, you're seeking the hottest girl. She's got nicer tits and she's better in bed and she's this. uh, Sex without love, man. Look at porn. It's great. Yeah, they're all beautiful. They're all hot. And oh my God, this is so amazing. Wow, she's doing all this nasty stuff that she would never do. And she's doing it in front of everybody. And it's so hot. But her and what, 10,000, 10, 100,000 other girls are doing the same thing? What's special about that? What's love about that? And she has parents, man. Parents who raised her, who spent years and years trying to get her to, to grow up so she could find love. And this is what she does. She, she shits on them and spits in their face by putting her, her, her sex out there and guys coming on her face. And like, that's normal. That's normal. That's love. That's what society's all about. That's sickness. That's distortion. It's temporary. And, and there's something pleasurable about it. There's something that's enticing and like, wow, I could sit here and I could, man, I could watch this and wow, get pleasure and what. But then, but then it's over and, and it's empty. When you have sex with somebody you love, she's still there. It's a shared bond. She loves you. And she hasn't left you because you're a loser. You're <clears throat> she, she found somebody you she can make more money with, which is what they do in porn. Well, I got paid. See you later. I'll, I'll, never, I'll never see you again. Maybe I'll sleep with you in a year. We, you, know, you know, we can do a scene again. But that's it. It's over. But if you have sex with a woman who you love, she's there. Likewise, if you have sex with a guy that you love, he's there. He's always there. Or, or if you go out and you, and, you, and, you, and you go to a club and you have sex with a guy because he's, he's cool, he's got nice clothes, he smells nice, he's got high status. And then you jump to another guy that's, that's, that's got all those things. That's shallow. Well, he's not there anymore. Or, 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 or you, wow, he's got, all, he's got high status and he's got all this money. And, but, but when I go home and after we have sex, I don't really love this guy. All I really like about him is his high status. All I really like about him is the fact that he's got money. Who he really is, his personality, his heart. I don't love that. I'm not in love with that. I don't love this guy's heart. I don't love his personality. I love his money and I love his social status. So you're cheating yourself. You should get in a relationship with a guy who you love, who you can spend time with because there's, there's intimacy there. And then when you have sex with him, after you have sex with him, there's love.